Warning, due to the nature of all individual perception being subjective, the following content may cause the viewer to be offended. Accepting responsibility for your own reaction without blaming the stimulus you have chosen to watch is advised. May contain flash photography. A little bit skip up. up. <laughs> for the mainstream news to focus on animal rights issues while humans are still behaving like this to one another. Zami video gives a close-up view of troops in action in Gaza. Even after all of these dead Palestinian civilians? No, I'm sorry about that, but I'm not apologizing. ISIS member claims to be holding a second American journalist and threatens to kill him as well. If the US does not get out of Iraq. How can we hope to stop hurting different species when many still fear humans of another race? And at least one of those hit him because I saw the flinch. The reason I have a clean conscience because I know I did my job right. How can your conscience be clear after killing somebody, even if it was an accidental death? They wrong. They know they wrong. How can humanity carry on when the people who make us laugh can't even handle it anymore? Please. Were you hiding your emotions? I thought you told me laughing was good. Laughing is good, but in this case, it might hurt the guy's feelings. How can we stop eating animals while humans are still biting one another? Luis Suarez appears once again to have sunk his teeth into an opponent. But hey, don't worry, it's not all bad news. Pope Francis says dogs, along with all of God's creatures, can go to heaven. There is a place for pets in paradise. Well, the Pope said, I'm a Catholic, so if the Pope says it, you know, that, that, that's the rule. I, I, I believe that. I like that. Dogs seem like they have souls. It's, it's... Also, other good news for animals is that the people of New York have finally woken up to the fact horses do not belong on their roads in the 21st century. This is thanks to the work of animal rights activists, New York's mayor, and anyone with a shred of compassion or common sense who have called for the ban. Horses don't belong on the streets of New York City. We must be Animals do not belong on the streets of New York City. Sure. Plain and simple. And so that's why we are introducing this legislation. Thank you very, very much. Meanwhile, the people profiting from the animal slave tourism desperately opposed was star support taken on by Hollywood actor Liam Neeson. Mr. Liam Neeson. Just the other day, I was on one of my walks. I was telling Tom here, and uh, a carriage passed me with tourists inside. The horse made a whinnying sound. One of the tourists leant forward, asked the driver, is the horse all right? The driver laughed and said, he's letting you know he's having a really good time. <laughs> I'm not making that up. This is the reason actors need good script writers, otherwise they go and say stupid things like this. And we are symbionts with them. Symbionts? Life forms living together for mutual advantage. Without the Mediterraneans, life could not exist. Uh, this is an industry that's been here since before Abraham Lincoln's first inauguration. Which would also be a good reason to bring back slavery and bear baiting. Much like slavery, the people who make money from their shackled co-workers don't want to see it get abolished. The thing that drives me batty is the idea that banning the carriage horses is some sort of liberal progressive agenda. But Mr. Melody, one of the most liberal characters of New York, has written a song to support the tourist carriages. Listen to the horses go clippity clop, clippity clop. I believe that this song has got what it takes to become a pop standard and corral mass support for this cause. Don't take the horses away, cause all you got left is a bale of hay. Meanwhile, in Britain, people discovered they'd been eating horses by accident after Tesco supermarket got caught out for not using slaughtered cows like the ingredients packaging had promised. But last winter's scandal when horse meat was found in lasagnas and burgers saw many people revolted. 
Yet in France, equine eating is normal. The RSPCA is not against, in principle, the eating of, of horses. But most consumers we found thought horses should be pets, not products. I look at horses as like friends, but not food that shouldn't be eaten, in my opinion. Why should customers trust Tesco? Well, millions of customers every week do trust us because they shop with us. The testing regime is intended to ensure that if it's not on the label, it's not in the packet. If it's beef, it's beef and nothing else. And that's the most comprehensive testing regime I've ever seen. Well, earlier I spoke to the Environment Secretary, Owen Patterson. David Cameron just said this is not about food safety. He's wrong, isn't he? Because you've no idea what's in our food. No, we are confident. We've had professional advice from the Food Safety Agency, and I have great confidence in the integrity of the British farming and food industry. Why? They've been but... lying to us. They've been selling us beef products no, that have got horse in it. That... Just wait a Who moment. Is Let testing me finish the sentence. To make sure that school beef burgers being served on Monday don't have dog in them. Meanwhile, China had its own breed of similar problems. A man that bought a package of what he thought was donkey meat at a local Walmart turned out to be fox meat instead. Tesco's went on to apologise for not feeding people cows like they said. I should have started by apologising to our customers. We're very sorry this has happened. Meanwhile, the royal family took this as an opportunity to suggest that maybe we should all be eating horse meat, as Princess Anne, the Queen's daughter, suggested at a horse welfare conference. Should we be considering a real market for horse meat? And would that reduce the number of welfare cases if there was a real value in the horse meat sector? I chuck that out for what it's worth. Um. Meanwhile, in the UK, ex-Queen Brian May took on the Battle of the Badgers as the government started using tax-paid money to fund psychopaths to kill off British badgers under the unscientific scaremongering that they could spread a disease called bovine tuberculosis into animal agriculture, causing a loss to dairy farmers. It says the culls in West Somerset and Gloucestershire killed far fewer badgers than was necessary to stop the spread of TB and didn't meet the criteria for humane killing. Well, with us now is the musician and activist and campaigner on this issue, Brian May. He opposed the cull. And also Phil Latham, who's a dairy farmer. Uh, I mean, it does look like now the scientific evidence is that the cull did not work. Um, we know that we need to cull badgers because that is the only way that we can address it sensibly no, and seriously. No, we don't know we need we, to control. We, no, please, no, I'm come sorry, on. I'm these sorry, are not Brian, theoretical badgers that are being we, killed. These are these are real animals with real feelings and real family groups. You are destroying them. This is a this is wrong and, and, from the and start. And they are they are also mostly in some areas really diseased and dying slowly through no, not. through through TB. So we're not benefiting farmers. It's an immense. It's a huge cost to the taxpayer. They're spending £4,200 per kill of badger. We can now vaccinate badgers at about £120 a head, which is a huge difference. Keep the badgers alive! Experts came out to say that the colour of badgers could actually make things worse. Badgers terrified, naturally, running out of their normal homelands, out of their territory and into adjacent territories. Now, should one of those badgers, and let's face it, not many are likely to carry the disease, but should one of those badgers be carrying BTB, it's going to infect the neighbouring population, which might be perfectly healthy. And this has been shown again and again through scientific process. Why does the National Farmers Union stick to this line of wanting to see badgers killed even though it's not in their interests, not in the interests of farmers to have the badger culling. And the results by the government advisor to that independent scientific group were that culling is not a viable policy option. Outraged animal lovers took to the streets in protest dressed as badgers like some kind of scene out of cult pagan British horror film The Wicker Man. And the politicians behind the killing started to feel the heat. The criteria that was set out initially has failed, yet you've sanctioned extension of these calls at the risk of spreading TB. Don't you think this has damaged the credibility of all involved and perhaps in some way the public has been misled? And like typical politicians started shifting blame anywhere they could. Now the trial has to be extended. You're moving the goalposts on all fronts. No, that's not right at all. The badgers have moved the goalposts. 
And if there was one good thing that came from all of this, it was animal lovers realising they didn't need to support the dairy industry and could drink almond milk instead. Meanwhile, similar anti-coal protests were going on down under. Thousands of people have rallied against WA's shark cull policy. In less than a week, the state government will bait and kill sharks which come too close to our shores. Next Friday, the state government will begin killing large sharks which come within a kilometre of our coast. Thinking that human beings can go out in the world just make everything extinct is insane. As a scientist, I don't believe in culling the sharks without any scientific evidence whatsoever. Some activists say they're willing to sabotage the bait lines, risking fines up to $25,000 or even jail. It's worth it. It's worth it to save the shark. The world's eyes are upon us. Uh, and we are being currently viewed as cavemen. The state government says its policy is not a shark cull and the plan will go ahead. The first shark was hooked. Now that the shark is dead, the fisherman has chosen not to bring it on board his boat. Instead, he's towing it next to his vessel. He has to take it at least five kilometres out to sea where he'll then dump the carcass. Um, hopefully it will prove successful. Okay. We will be rescuing animals if there are animals of distress on the drum lines, without a doubt. Will you be taking bait off the hooks? Um, that's on a... it depends. It's an individual basis. Even though over a hundred scientific papers proved it was a waste of time and money, politicians felt too threatened by a possible drop in tourism and spent taxpayers' money to slaughter these animals in their own environment. Organisations like Sea Shepherd work both legally on land and on the waters to try and stop this. And if you don't know who Sea Shepherd are, they are the vegan pirates of our oceans, led by Captain Paul Watson. We first went down to intervene against the uh, illegal operations of the Japanese whaling fleet. Nobody in the world even knew what they were doing. Even the people of Japan had no idea what was going on down there. which helped lead to this. The International Court of Justice has ruled against Japan, saying the country's annual Antarctic whale hunt is not for scientific purposes. The court says Japan's scientific reasons cannot be justified and that the country is breaking international law. We can collect all the information we need to conserve and manage these whales through non-lethal methods. Japan argued the International Court of Justice does not have the jurisdiction to decide what is or isn't scientific whaling. The definition of science, its lawyers argued, is subjective. Each year, millions of animals are kept in labs and subjected to having new cosmetic products tested on them. Large companies continue to do this due to wanting to sell to a Chinese market. China, which up until last year had mandatory vivisection for all cosmetics and products, have now begun to change their laws. We already started uh, in our advanced research the development of the reconstructed skin models uh, based on which we have developed a, uh, several uh, alternative methods for the safety evaluation of our products and uh, ingredients. The new regulation will allow both Chinese and foreign countries operating within China the option to avoid animal testing on the basis that they only use pre-existing tested ingredients, which is a big start. Also in China, in the town of Yulin, there is an annual dog-eating festival. This barbaric cruelty gives the West a window of insight to how those who have made the vegan connection see all animals. Gadamai, an even more hellish festival that occurs every five years in Nepal, saw in 2014 over 100,000 animals smuggled illegally across the Indian border just 50 kilometers away. The insane excuse of religion and money is used to justify performing this savage sacrifice to vegetarian Hindu gods. 
We now have until 2019 to find a way to stop this primitive festival from ever taking place again. You say goodbye and I say hello. Back in the UK, there was controversy over halal foods being sold unlabeled to those who only wanted to eat non-halal slaughtered meat. There are, well, there are, other, there are other religions, for example, who don't like the blessing that's given to uh, halal meat and, and don't want to buy it for that reason. So it's not just about animal welfare. It's a thinly veiled thing for prejudice. It, it does raise questions about how humane halal slaughter is. The animal dies, and as, as, as I think Russell Brand was tweeting about today, he was saying that... Stand. I bet being standing very nice. I, I think the whole thing, look, if you've got any concern at all about animal welfare, you've got to not eat meat. Um, killing animals is, 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 is not a nice process at all and, um, uh, and, and you know, it's, it's better not to eat meat. I think we eat far too much meat but, anyway. But, but what, what I need to know is, was it conscious when it was done? That's where I need the labelling. Are you hungry? Attention unsuspecting consumers. It is okay, repeat okay, for chicken to be shipped across country. In fact, you can refreeze it and refreeze it over and... A happy animal is a quality animal and a quality animal is, is where we want to be. While people condemn those of other cultures for killing animals, they hypocritically find ways to justify it for themselves. This was even more evident when the news reported this story. Sheriff says whoever did this is sick, no doubt about it. Now burglars broke through the back fence of a foster farm's chicken shed in the Central Valley town of Carruthers, that's near Fresno. It was a bloody mess. 920 chickens beaten to death with golf clubs. Psychopathic behavior, it's sick behavior and uh, People that will do this, it can definitely lead to other things. Police say there was probably more than one suspect. Workers found the massacred poultry at 8.30 in the morning. It's crazy that someone would break into the chicken shed to kill them. It's just crazy. Foster Farms released a statement calling the crime an unconscionable act of animal cruelty. Foster Farms estimates the loss at about $5,000, but it's the abject cruelty of the crime that alarms the company and detectives. There is now a $5,000 reward for information leading to an arrest. It doesn't seem to matter about the kind of abuse, but culturally what kind of animal it is. The man on the Treasure Coast is under arrest, accused of torturing the family cat. 12-year-old daughter is recording the abuse and showed it to her mother who called police. The cat suffered a broken tail, a damaged ear, and damaged jaw. We're going to have x-rays of that cat as well coming up tonight at 5 to show you the damage the cat suffered to its tail. That's it for episode 1. Next time we're going to be looking at celebrities, campaigns, activism, politicians, Squeal. and vegan athletes. I'm ready to go vegan and I'm not even sure what that means. Until next time.